Oh, and they do have the the manual. Nobody wants to read that. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a manual anyway? The, you're not going to read the manual? Nope. So this is Tick Station. Definitely can't pronounce that one. I thought this was pretty interesting when they contacted me and they sell these on Tindy and everything. And I'll put the link down below as always. This is a cool little breadboard power supply. And I think I even a little more. And I haven't messed with it. So this will be my first in, you know, impression of this thing. So... This is, looks like it's got a few different pieces to it. Um, this pops on. So does this actually go on the breadboard? Does it fit? Okay, so that, that, that does. And then you could put that, that's pretty cool. If I line it up right, there we go. So that pops right on the breadboard there. And then that would allow you to, you know, that automatically populates these with five volts on your five volt ground rail. And then it also populates 3.3 volts. And then you can even come in here and grab 12 volts, you know, with a little jumper wire or whatnot. If you're not familiar with the breadboards, you know, you're just basically going to say, hey, I want 12 volt positive. Well, that's that's all lit up from there. And you could pop that over here or something. And don't worry, none of this is plugged in. So that's pretty interesting. And the adjust, I guess, oh, so that's adjustable. Okay, so that's one. Let's zoom in a little closer on this guy. I'm sure mobile users are probably going, what the hell, Travis? We'll even use their screwdriver as a little pointer. So it looks like over here, we get the power on button. And this is the adjustable voltage. And that's 1 to 25 volts DC. Then you got even input voltage here. So you've got the old school USB. Oh, and USB-C. Ah, I was wondering how they were doing that. That's pretty cool. And then you've got terminals if you want to feed it with something else. I like the flexibility of this. This is pretty slick. Definitely some thought went into this here. So this little add-on pops in here. And then you've got now all these terminals for five volts, three volts, whatever, your adjustments, all this. And you got little screw terminals so you can do little ferrules or whatever you want to do. The ultimate cool little bench supply without having to have a big bench supply and just do it off a of USB-C. That's pretty slick. This is the Third Reality Smart Plug Gen 2. Now, the cool thing about Third Reality, they actually have software engineers assigned to do pull requests and add their items and whatnot to ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT, etc. Pretty awesome to see them supporting, you know, the open source projects such, you know, for the various people and whatnot. Now, of course, this also works with a ton of other stuff like the Echo Hubs and Smart Things, etc. And, you know, the cool thing is, yeah, check this out while I was talking. It has the Home Assistant logo on that. That's pretty awesome. It's just a regular smart plug like you would normally see. Now, this is, the, if you're familiar with the channel, let's zoom out a little bit is one of our favorites was the other S31. Now they do make a Zigbee version of this and they even went to an S40 and 41 and everything, but they're pretty cool smart plugs. And yeah, it's even smaller. And there's no obnoxious LED like on, I think the S41 or S30, I can't remember which model, but it was a pretty obnoxious bright light on that thing and you couldn't control it. Maybe it was the S31 Zigbee. But this one does have power monitoring. You won't see that in the S31 Zigbee, the S41 or 40 Zigbee from Sonoff. The only other North America plug that I found that's actually decent 
for power monitoring is the singlet plugs. And I hate to burn price into things and because things fluctuate, but um, yeah, these were like half the price of the singlets. This is pretty awesome. I mean, it is 15 amp output. It says resistive. 15 amp max, etc. So it should cover most things. Now I probably wouldn't put a heater on it or whatnot, but it's got a little button on the side and I paired it up, worked great with Zigbee 2 MQTT. And yes, it does route. It's not an endpoint device. So it will expand your mesh of things and they have OTA enabled. So you'll be able to get firmware updates later with this as well. So if you want to check that one out, Go grab yourself a one pack, four pack, whatever it may be. They're pretty cool little smart plugs for the Zigbee thing. And if you haven't done the Zigbee thing, just really take things out the box and pair it up. There's no flashing things or whatever. It's kind of boring, but in a good way. So next up, seed or seed. Um, yeah, they sent us a few things. I'm eager to check out some of them, and I've been playing with a few of them. So, first off, what controls it is they have these, and yeah, we're going to need to really zoom in for this. It is that stupid small. This is their ESP32C3. And that is USB-C on the end there. Now, there's no antenna. There's no PCB antenna on this. And, yeah, they do have the pinouts and everything. You can solder on your pin headers if you like. They do have a little UFL connector for the Wi-Fi antenna. This is the Wi-Fi antenna on here. And you can kind of see in there... It's like a PCB sticker style antenna. You've seen these before. Actually, this has used a lot of different smart switches and smart plugs and stuff to give them a little better gain than a PCB antenna. So definitely pretty neat there for this. Now, of course, this is ESP32 C3, so you can run Tasmoda or ESP Home, etc. all on it. But once you do have to, you see, there's some soldering with this. So once you do solder on the little pin headers here, it's basically a breakout board for this small little adapter. And that way, like I guess these are the JSTs, and you can just take and plug these in. Like, for instance, this is a gas, you know, VOC in the carbon dioxide sensor, I believe. And then there's like a little display and everything is pretty much plug and play, <clears throat> which is pretty cool for doing like prototyping and just learning to play with sensors and whatnot. You know, this is a, that same old sensor I show. Don't show it again, Travis. Another little breakout, another ESP32 C3, another little display. And then they did this, all. I wanted this all in one environmental sensor and it has like particle sensors and well, we'll show the back of it there. So I haven't played with it just yet. Of course, it's still in the box. This is all why we do the unboxing, right? But you notice that same trend, the little same little plugs that plug into this board here. I'm assuming this one plugs in here. Yep. Sure does. Plugs in like that. That way you don't have to solder all these things when you're prototyping and wanting to play around. Now this little bad boy is uh, has a little fan on it. I'm guessing that's you know for the particle sensors. It has an inlet and an outlet and uh, designed for HVAC and air quality. Kind of curious to play with this in uh, ESP Home and play around with things. Now the one cool sensor from Seed that I was kind of excited to play with and I have been messing around with it. I'm just gonna say it's radar sensing. And you always see it around as MM wave. And basically it just has pins as well, but you'll see it's a little bit different. 
these are that 2.0 millimeter DuPont. And so you do have to get different cables and this to prototype with it and whatnot. And I've had mixed results with this so far. Um, I tried turning down the sensitivity a lot. I'm still continuing to play around with some of the settings, but it stays triggered all the time, even though I have it in an environment with nothing moving at all. And I haven't had that issue with other sensors. So not sure just yet what to make of this. Uh, the jury's out on this one for now. Now, speaking of human presence, you want one ready to go? Well, this one is pretty interesting. It, was, it works well from what I've found so far. Now, this model is just the USB. You kind of mount it to the wall, and it is Zigbee. And it does pair up. I, believe, I know it works with uh, Zigbee to MQTT. I'm assuming it works fine with ZHA. A lot of times they do add them over there as well. And you can see it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to this. They even include the USB. I'm sure. Yep. The USB cable. So they're doing the Apple thing. And uh, no charger with it but they assume everybody else has usb a somewhere but they had that cable there so not a whole lot to it it says 5 volt 1a you know it says human presence it is going to come up as a two-year branded but it does work well and there's a lots of different settings and whatnot in zigbee to mqtt and it's fairly small as well so it's got a decent little target and it's ready to go Pairs right up, no code, no nothing, and boom, you can do your presence sensing without having to deal with you know, when someone sitting still and not being able to detect their motion. This is actually going to detect the people when they're just sitting there, like, say, watching TV or whatnot. Pretty awesome stuff, and it's stupid small. Oh, and it does also have, which I forgot when I was putting the box, it has a Lux sensor as well to see how bright it is in the room. If you see in that trend already, that Zigbee trend, well, that's what this is. So this is a Zigbee smoke detector. And yeah, we were just looking around on Discord and people were asking around. I said, sure, I'll buy one. Now I'll definitely have to run this through the test and see how it does. But um, it is battery powered. I didn't pull the battery off of it just yet, but let's do that now. Let's see. It says off, twist on. So twist on, twist off. Wax on, wax off. Okay. So photoelectric smoke alarm. And that's probably that CR123A. Yeah, CR123A. So let me put Zigbee to MQTT in pairing mode. All right, we got a blinking light. Very hard to see with the camera, and I'm seeing it pairing up a Zigbee to MQTT. So, pairs up just fine. And um, we'll see if we can, we'll bring it outside and do a smoke test with it and see if we get a response back. And um, pretty small little guy, you know, you mount this up and just sticks down and you'll be able to see your smoke detector feed straight into home assistant or whatever it may be on the zigbee side plus you still get your speaker so doesn't remove functionality today we're going to be um, unboxing this devoom, devoom thing and it it's like a little computer so let's get unboxing the dog's trying to get in the room <laughs> We're going to have to edit out all this crinkling plastic. Huh? Put the plastic on the floor. Okay. This is what it looks like. Oh, there's a little button that opens it. You just got to figure this thing out. Whoa. Okay. This is what the actual thing looks like. Satisfying. It's satisfying? Mm -hmm. It's probably good for your desk, huh? I think, it, what is this, like a... 
I think it says, oh, it's a portable speaker with retro pixel art. Um, color display, smart alarm, sleep aid, DJ mixer. Hmm. Okay, it'd be interesting. This is what I'll be doing all day. It's kind of like your. On a computer. It's kind of like your Commodore. Yeah. Let me see. So it's got a couple keys. And it has a case that goes with it. And this is, you just pull this down. I guess that's like the pull down. Yeah, maybe. Let me see. Whoa. Oh, that's just to show. Like what you could do. What's on? The, let me see the ports on the side. So they got micro SD for I guess I don't know. Put different programs maybe. Looks like a reset button on off. It, oh look, USB. This US, the, that's the new USB C. Oh, that's that's the the right one, huh? Mhm. Mm um, anything else on it? Nothing really. There's just this that we peel off. Does he peel that off? Let's see what it does. Oh, it wants Bluetooth. Can you play this again? Right there, start. Can you play this again? Like this, watch. Let me show you. Um, watch. Let me see. Watch. Watch. I don't see, know. it's Tetris. I don't know how to play Tetris. You're going to play this on your Switch? No. And I you can go. I don't, I don't have it on my Switch. See, it's Tetris. Oh, now you have messed up, dude. That one's got sound. This is cool. Oh, oh yeah, this is the game. Oh, I see this game. That's like a uh, Ragnoid or whatever, kind of. It's actually kind of neat. I, to, I can't like it's go a cool past. little retro speaker. It's it, even the the lights are lit up, and the menu's not too bad to figure out. But um, this is I, a fun game, though. I like it. To see what kind of other like software, we'll dig into more of their software and stuff, and see what they have on there. Come on, I lost sixteen. That's a that's a good record. You can just. Do it like this. Yeah. I really like this. This is a good. Oh, and they do have the the manual. Nobody wants to read that. <laughs> Who needs a manual anyway? The, you're not gonna read the manual? Nope. Huh? What else are we gonna say? Press all the buttons and you take care. 